MH370 is going to go down in history as one of the moments like when, where were you when JFK died or when the 9-11 attacks happened? Where were you when you first heard about this missing plane? Well, I, I heard it on Saturday morning when the news was just coming out. There, there was a, a slight uh, surreal feel to it, like it was a bit unreal. But of course, as we watched the news, well, this is very real and, and going on social media and people saying, oh, I know that person, I know that person, I know that person on the flight. And definitely it, it hit home. This is very, very real. This is a big crisis. You're a social activist. Your father was the longest serving ever prime minister. Obviously, you've got a completely unique insight into society here. What's your Malaysia? Well, my Malaysia, I think... Uh, has, has two faces, I guess. Uh, this is the official one, uh, which you tend to see more on TV, of our officials and all that. And, and that can be uneven, but I don't think it always uh, shows the real Malaysia. The real Malaysia are all these people who've been going to the walls and, and writing what they feel and not caring who's on the plane. You say it's also a modern country. Does it ever scare you, though, as the week winds on from missing passengers to possibly the involvement of either the pilot or maybe uh, Islamic fundamentalists? Do you think that that would overwhelm the true Malaysia for you? Well, I guess it all depends on the media and how they spin it. Uh, I guess we can't control what the international media says. If something like that is true, and I, I don't know whether it is, you know, I mean, that might be the, the path of inquiry, but we don't know at this moment. Um, I think it would be considered an aberration of what Malaysians are, um, not at all what the average Malaysian uh, is at all. What do you think it is that people hope for at this stage? Do you think they truly uh, believe that survivors will be found or do you think they just hope for peace no matter what? We're also thinking about the families, you know, the families who are waiting uh, for, for the news and the walls are really in support of them too, to make them know that they're not alone, we're, we're holding their hands, you know, and we're, we're embracing them and uh, we're, we're going through all this with them. You've been bringing your own children to the Walls of Hope and I was uh, watching the news and seeing your parents going to meet the families yeah. of the passengers here in Kuala Lumpur. Many people have been saying that this is quite possibly Malaysia's 9-11 moment. Clearly this still is the shock phase, but once that shock begins to subside and the future begins to reveal itself, how do you think it will change society here, not just for a nation, but for a people. You know, the strangest thing of all is that a week before all this happened, I wrote in my column, my, you know, I have a regular column in a newspaper, I wrote in the column about how uh, all Malaysians have a shared destiny. And I used the analogy of being on a plane, that we all on this plane we call Malaysia, and as sad and tragic as it is for the families involved, for the rest of Malaysia, I think, I hope that they get it, that we are all on the same plane. Um, and we all, you know, need to be together to, to, to get to where we want to go. Hey friend. Do share.